Welcome to American Dream Selling Kansas City, a city known for barbecue, crazy sports fans, and of course, our beautiful fountains. I'm your host, Adriana Bates, and we're gonna go all around town to take a look at some amazing real estate and experience our culture and our lifestyle. American Dream, welcome to Kansas City. to Selling Kansas City. I'm your host, Carol Ross Izabelski, and today I get to show you Kansas City, Missouri. I have a really fun day planned today. As I'm sure you've noticed my accent, I am originally from Brazil, and so today's episode is going to be all about that. I'm going to stop by my favorite Brazilian treat store on the plaza, and then we're gonna go tour a home in Kansas City, Missouri, where my clients are living their American dream. Let's go. Jessica, tell everybody what is a Brigadeiro? Brigadeiro is Brazil's favorite sweet. Okay. It is a mixture between truffles and fudge. It is creamier than the regular truffles. It's soft. It's the kind of sweet that will change your life. Amazing. What is your favorite flavor? For me, uh, the milk chocolate Brigadeiro. Milk chocolate. Because it's the, one, it's the most popular one mm -hmm. in Brazil, as you know. It's the one I've been making since I was a child. So we have it's a special place. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about the story of your business, Jessica. You know, it actually has a funny story. We started back in 2015. I used to have a corporate job and I was sitting at work and suddenly just hit me the idea. So I called my mom who was also working and, uh, and I told her, I was like, mom, let's start a business selling Brigadeiro. She's like, no, Jessica, I'm working. Can we talk about this later? I was like, no, I need to know now. Yeah, are so you funny. in or you out? She's like, okay, I'm in. And I see that you also are here selling other products that are local to Kansas City from other stores around the plaza. You wanna tell us a little bit more about that? So we do have uh, products from 3D HQ. They're also here on the plaza. They make these amazing 3D figurines of my mom and I. Awesome. I have local coffee from the roastery. That's the coffee we sell and we make espresso drinks with this coffee. And um, just little things from other local stores. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for chatting with us today. I have to say I'm so proud of you, and I'm so happy that you brought a little bit of our Brazilian culture to Kansas City. So I got my Brigadeiro box. Now let's go tour my client's recently purchased and remodeled home in Casey Mall. Let's go. So we're here at this gorgeous house on Silvertooth Farms where you get to have country living while still being in the city. This home has five bedrooms, five bathrooms, over 5,500 square feet. It has over one acre, a saltwater pool, an incredible view. We're gonna go inside and chat with the owners and take a tour. Let's go. Well, this is one of my favorite part of my home, just because this amazing view that we have. Um, we usually sit here as a family uh, with our beautiful three kids, yes. and then my daughter loves to play uh, the piano. So this is one of my favorite place in this home. So Regis, what is your favorite part of the home? Uh, absolutely, I'm gonna have to say it's the kitchen. You yes. know, that's where we sit down. That's and the heart of the home. We, yeah, yeah, we, you know, as a Brazilian, we eat a lot, you know? Yes, I and know. And my wife, she cooks very well. She's an amazing so, yes. cook. So, yes, sure. when I get back home from work, that's where I go. And I see it out there immediately. Like, that's my first, you know, I step love it. to the house. All right, do you want to show us? Because it is beautiful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's All go. Right. Let's, Let's go. go check it out. So, Regis, I know you have this incredible story of success in Kansas City. What piece of advice would you give other Brazilians or Latinos in Kansas City to kind of get where you're at? Well, uh, I tell you this, you know, first of all, you got to dream big. Yeah. I'm a dreamer, you know. Dream big, work hard, because you're going to have to work hard. Yeah and always stay humble. You know, it's always inspiring to me to see how my Brazilian culture is becoming more and more part of Kansas City. Thank you for touring Kansas City, Missouri with me, and I'll see you on the next episode of The American Dream.
Kansas City is quickly becoming one of the top metros in the nation to both work and play. In fact, Kansas City was recently listed in the top 23 places to visit by Condé Nest Traveler. And between the amazing food, the dynamic sports teams, and the rich history and culture, there's no wonder why. But did you know that Kansas City is one of the top performing arts hubs in the entire nation? I'm Chris Austin, your host for the American Dream, and today we are selling Kansas City. Let's get started. I'm here with Amy Hamm, who's the president of the American Theater Guild here in Kansas City. And Amy, who would have thought that here in Kansas City, we would be able to offer things on par with places like Chicago and New York when it comes to the performing arts? Yeah, it's so amazing just to be able to go right within our own community and be able to see these amazing offerings direct from Broadway. Yeah. That's amazing. And so how has your organization been a part of bringing that to Kansas City? So our organization, we're actually the largest not-for-profit touring Broadway presenter in the country. We support Broadway series in 16 markets, including here in Kansas City. So we've got our team here in Kansas City. We're doing all the work to get the shows here, from talking with New York to get the actors and the costumes here to selling all the tickets. But there, you know, you guys are more about more than just bringing Broadway to Kansas City. There's a huge community aspect, a huge uh, educational aspect to what you do. Tell us more about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's the whole reason for our, our existence is uh, all of the work that we do to bring these big Broadway shows. It's so that we can raise money so that we can bring underserved communities to the theater and expose them to the power and the passion that the theater can provide. So in a given year here in Kansas City, we can actually support up to 2,000 underserved community members, whether they're children, Title I students, or diverse communities. Yeah, that's incredible. You know, when I think of the performing arts in Kansas City, you know, whether, whether it's Broadway, the, the orchestra, the ballet, uh, Kansas City is just so rich in the performing arts and that no place showcases it better than, than one of the Kansas City's most iconic and beautiful staples of our downtown skyline, the Kauffman Center. So let's go check it out. We're here with Paul Schofer, who's the president and CEO of the Kauffman Center. Paul, this building is amazing. Tell us just a little bit more about it. From the start, our architect, Moshe Safdi, wanted to make it a welcoming environment, but he wanted it to be a very welcoming environment, a welcoming building, so he essentially created it with no backside to it. You have this beautiful window atrium that looks over the South Kansas City, the Crossroads Arts District, and invites people to come in. It's almost like the front porch to the community. The other side, the north side, has this beautiful architecture that faces downtown. So no matter how you look at it, uh, 360 degrees around it, it's a beautiful sight to behold. That's great. And, and now you're home to the, the Casey Symphony, the, the Casey Ballet, the, the Lyric Opera. Of course, Broadway comes through here. What are some of the other amazing performances that you've had come through? You bet. Well, our vision at the Kauffman Center is to provide diverse and extraordinary performing arts experiences for everyone in our community. So you hit it on it right there. We're trying to find something for everyone. So in addition to our resident organizations, we have a variety of community arts organizations. So it could be the Kansas City Jazz Orchestra or Hairman Jewel Series, which brings the best artists, the greatest artists in the world, like Yo-Yo Ma or Joshua Bell or Renee Fleming. This could include Boys to Men, it could include Willie Nelson, John Legend, um, we've had Art Garfunkel, even Alice Cooper has been on our stages. So as you see, we're trying to get something literally for everyone. Yeah, very, it's extremely diverse. And we just so appreciate what you guys do for the community. We appreciate this place. It, we've, we've talked about the beauty of this place from the inside and out, but I, I think to really see how it's transformed the skyline of Kansas City, we're gonna have to get a little bit higher up, and I, I think I know just the place. Sitting up high on a hill overlooking the downtown skyline, the west side is one of Kansas City's best hidden gems. And with great restaurants, shopping, and a mix of 100-year-old homes and brand new modern construction, like this Edward Franklin modern build with a $1.7 million view, the west side has become one of Kansas City's premier locations. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for joining us, and hopefully you can join us on the next episode of The American Dream.
Welcome to Lenexa, Kansas. It's Jennifer Weaver and Stephanie Bullcock from Selling Kansas City on the American Dream TV, taking you behind the scenes and sharing stories from the city we love. Today we are in Lenexa, Kansas, and we are so excited to show you one of the fastest growing mid-sized cities in the state of Kansas. It's this great feel and a vibe nestled within the larger Kansas City metro area. And that's no surprise, Steph, due to Lenexa's huge investment in their infrastructure. This included a mixed-use footprint of trendy apartments, lofts, single-family residents, government, business, all coming together to create this stylish, affordable, and walkable community. Lenexa's vision for the future represents this great balance of tech, innovation, all while maintaining that great culture that they've been able to build. Yep, and the biggest representation of this is the Lenexa City Center. Yes. Love it, look at it. This is a unique and dynamic new downtown offering the residents ease of shopping, dining, working, all without the need of an automobile. So much of that growth has been fueled by new construction with great affordable prices starting in the 500s, going all the way up into luxury living into the millions. There truly is a neighborhood and a new build for every buyer. Yep, and you know what I love most that yeah. you just talked about with new homes? Yeah. The affordability is here. Absolutely. Let's go take a look at some new homes and show you what we're talking about. We are here with one of our absolute favorite builders, Chris Polly <laughs> of Polly Homes, and we are so excited to talk to him. This is a multiple Parade of Homes award-winning plan, y'all. Yeah. It has a really great feel, and you won't believe it, but you can actually get into a Modelo in the low 600,000s in mm -hmm. Lenexa. We decide, if we decide we want to go ahead and move into it, we should be able to move into it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. a lot of the standard features are things yeah. we're going to want. Mm -hmm. So we're going to include a garage door opener, yeah. mm -hmm. end caps on the stairs, a nice yes. Berber carpet on the stairs or upgraded carpet. Let's take a yeah. look. We're right here in the entry. Love this front office area. It's huge being able mm -hmm. to have four bedrooms plus an office yeah. area. Yeah. It's yeah. been great to have an office up here. Sometimes people will use it as a formal dining room, but most of the time mm -hmm. with COVID, people do a lot of home offices. This 10 foot ceiling mm -hmm. is absolutely magical. The big wall of windows and I love, love love, love, love the being able to see, look out onto this expanded patio mm -hmm. area. It's much larger than other yeah. homes that are in this price point. It's a really great outdoor um, area back there. One neat option is we have it so you can put it here, but it depends on what's back there. It can also go behind the dining room mm -hmm. or on the other side of the kitchen. That's love, love, love the built-in appliances, mm -hmm. the island, you know, great quality cabinets. In Poly Homes, a lot of what you see is what you get. and. This is kind of the magical yeah. spot. It's an L-shaped pantry. Yep. This is probably one of our most popular upgrades. Mm -hmm. A lot of buyers really love the butler's pantry area. Yeah. And behind An you, that's a space for a full-size fridge. Yeah. The flow of this plan is just absolutely fantastic. We have a second living space up here, a loft if you will, mm -hmm. but there's, we took out all the hallways. There's no hallways in this house. It's a big master bedroom, have plenty of space. And then of course we come into the master bathroom. This is our third most popular thing. It's a mm. freestanding tub. Mm -hmm. and then in the shower, we're gonna have two shower heads and a rain head. And then we got a big master closet. This is 16 feet this long. Is ridiculous. Yeah, you walk through to a laundry, so it's a pass through to get on out. Thank you yes. so much yes. for giving us the time to give us this great yeah. tour. What a fun tour oh today. My gosh. This has been great. Well, I'm Stephanie Bullcock, Jennifer Weaver from the Collective at Compass, and thanks so much for watching Selling Kansas City on American Dream TV. Come back and see us. Good morning and welcome to American Dream TV. I'm Jenny Burkhead and I'm here with Sarah Johnson today and we are going to give you some insight on one of the most respected developers and builders in Kansas City, Don Julian. Yeah, we welcome you to take a tour with us of this award-winning custom home built by Don Julian Builders. Come on in. Hi 
Hi, Don. Welcome. Good morning. I know that Don Julian Builders have been a major player in the Kansas City area in development and building for over 40 years. Um, would you please share with us your business philosophy and the history of your company? Sure, be glad to do that, Jenny. Well, as you uh, may know, I actually got started in the home building business by accident. I'm a born and raised New Yorker. I work for an ITT company back east. And um, I got transferred out here in the mid 70s and started to work for ITT uh, here in Kansas City. And at that point decided that I wanted to build my own home. I really couldn't find what I wanted. One of the guys at work in our maintenance shop actually said, gee, Julian, uh, you're a home builder now. I made a plywood <laughs> sign and put your name on there and your phone number. I put it out in that sand pile in front of your house. Buyer came by, saw the home there and wanted to talk to me about it. And I said, gee, I'm really not a home builder. I'm an engineer by degree. And they said, well, if you could just help us, you know, get started on a project. Yeah. So I, I kind of worked with them on that get them started and of course that led from one thing to another. And I think that next year I had maybe four or five jobs lined up so I uh, resigned from ITT knowing that this was a lot of fun, I really enjoyed it. Started thinking about well, what would my philosophy be, well, how would I do this different than the competition? So my thoughts were, well I'll try to build some really good quality, apply the engineering approach to the construction and then I'm gonna to try to offer the best customer service I can offer. When I get done with all that, I kind of turned this into a, a plywood sign in a sand pile to a company last year, which uh, was about $100 million in sales. Wow. Thank you, Don, so much for your time and that inspirational story. And now I'd love to talk to your son, Jeff Julian, who is also part of your building company and will be the face of Don Julian Builders for many, many years to come. That'd be great, thank you. So we're here now with Jeff Julian. We're here at Sealy Farms in one of your new models. It's beautiful and uh, so we'd like to ask you a few questions about um, the future, about the future of Don Julian Builders. Oh, well, thanks, what thanks. What are your plans? Well, so obviously I'm very excited and honored to be able to carry on the uh, legacy of Don Julian Builders into the future. And I think we are working on some new fun things. So, you know, uh, plans are a lot more contemporary, you know, modern these days, you know, smaller footprints and wide open, you know, living spaces. So we work with architects and developing some new plans. Uh, we're also involved in some multifamily projects, so attached type of uh, luxury twin villas should be exciting into the future. And, uh, you know, just continuing to build high quality homes for people in the Kansas City area. It's a fun job and, and we enjoy it. This here is Terry Stoltz. She's the lead in-house interior designer with Donjulin Builders. And she's gonna be talking to us about future trends uh, and what Don Julian Builders would like to incorporate in his homes. Sure, of course. In keeping with the innovative designs that Don and Jeff incorporate with our plans, we try to keep the ceilings high, the rooms open, and keep form and function. Um, some of the newer items that are coming into play into trends these days are larger format tiles, custom wood elements, and um, just to kind of make a statement in your home to make it yours. and custom banisters and things like that, just fun, endless possibilities of creativity. Thanks for joining us today with a little behind the scenes at Staley Farms. Once again, I'm Jenny Burkhead, and we'll see you next time on American Dream TV. We just stopped in at our favorite local bakery to pick up some donuts for the firefighters at the local firehouse nearby. We're gonna talk to the fire chief about what a normal day looks like for the firefighters here and learn more about the amazing work these hometown heroes do for our community. As a veteran owned real estate team, we love being able to highlight our hometown heroes and the selfless sacrifices they make to empower our community and make it better. Welcome to Selling Kansas City. We're your hosts, Lauren and Joe. Let's go. Pratt, 
Kearney's fire chief. Thanks for letting us talk to you today and showing us around the fire station. Sure. So if you don't mind, could you tell us a little bit about what an average day at the firehouse looks like? Um, average day shift change is at seven o'clock. Uh, so the guys going off duty leave, uh, exchange information with the guys coming on. Uh, they do truck checks every morning, have a little sit down at the table, might grab some breakfast. Um, then they kind of get into the routine of their day, whether it be inspections, training, running calls, or whatever the day might bring. Every day is a little different. And knowing that you play such a vital role in our town, what is the thing that gives you the most satisfaction out of your job? Um, just being able to help people in the community is really why most of these guys are here. You know, they want to they be able to give back, um, make sure people enjoy a good quality of life, and that they're safe. That's, yeah. that's kind of the main thing I would say. One of the things we wanted to check out while we're here is the Matt Mason Memorial. Could you tell us a little bit about that and who Matt Mason is and what he means to our community? Yeah, I can give you a little background on it. Um, Matt was a local high school student. He grew up between here and Holt. Um, he was just a little bit younger than me and then went into military service, was um, on a, one of the elite groups of SEALs and unfortunately uh, was killed in action. So why did you feel or why did Carney feel like it was important to memorialize him? Um, you know, I think as a as a nation, we regard our soldiers very high and to have a, a, a local young man that was on such an elite force, I think just resonated with a lot of the community. Well, thank you. Thanks for chatting with us. Sure. I appreciate it. Well, enjoy a donut. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing and I loved how welcoming they are. If you haven't stopped by your local fire station, make sure that you stop in, say hi, bring them some donuts, and see everything that they do for your local community. Absolutely. Next, we're going to go check out one of our newest listings. It's actually owned by another local hometown hero. Zach is an eight-year Marine veteran who did two combat tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. Let's go check it out. absolutely love this property. Everything about this home exemplifies the Americana country lifestyle, including this sprawling front porch. One thing I love is how peaceful it is out here with these 10 acres, but you're only a quick five minute drive to town. As we stand out here, I can see why we have so many buyers that call us looking for properties that offer the perks of country living. favorite part of this home is the screened in back porch. I know we would spend a lot of mornings with a cup of coffee or evenings just watching the kids play. Yeah, we for sure would. This is Selling Kansas City with Joe and Lauren of the Nelson Home Group. Thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again on the American Dream TV. See you next time. Welcome to American Dream TV. We're your hosts, Adam and Jennifer Butler, and we're coming to you today from one of Kansas City's many rooftops in the Crossroads District. If you're not familiar with the Crossroads District, it's just south of beautiful downtown Kansas City and just north of the plaza. And we happen to be on one of our favorite rooftops around here at the Crossroads Hotel. It's got a wonderful, colorful past, and it's a beautiful hotel to stay in and a lot of fun. We're also gonna pop by the Kansas City Zoo and check on the construction of the beautiful new aquarium that's being constructed to open in 2023. Let's go take a tour of the hotel now. Let's go. We're here at the atrium at the Crossroads Hotel with General Manager Jeff Conrad. Jeff, thank you for your time today. Thank you, glad to have you here. Well, I'm glad to be here. Hey, listen, I know this building has a very unique history. I wanna know a little bit about it. Yeah, this building is over 100 years old, and it was originally built and opened uh, by Pat's Bottling Distribution. Oh, really? Okay. PBR. PBR. Okay, great. <laughs> so this was actually uh, their distribution center, so they bottled it, put it in barrels, and the windows of the hotel that you'll see is actually where the carriages and wagons and horses would actually come in to get the beer. Uh, that's pretty, that's my dad's favorite beer, by the way, in the day. Good choice. Yeah. 
But I know you got the ramps out here and stuff. It's really kind of cool. So tell me about your atrium here, because I know there's a story behind this too, which is beautiful, by the way. Absolutely, thank you. So this atrium is actually a factory floor. So when we came into the building, we repurposed all the floor. Uh, so all the wood that you see that's stained and rehung is original from the building. And we created this beautiful uh, natural light atrium. It is spectacular. I mean, it's just great, so thank you. Hope you enjoyed our visit at the Crossroads Hotel. We're gonna to head to the zoo now and check the progress on the aquarium project. Now we're joined by Ryan Bradshaw, Senior Project Manager of the Aquarium Project here at the Kansas City Zoo. Ryan, can you tell us about the project? Yes, thanks for joining us. So this is the largest project uh, at the zoo. They are 34 exhibits. It's really meant to bring the ocean to the Midwest. So our construction budget's right around 60 million. The overall budget is about 75 million for the animals and things like that. Wow. Wow. Is the zoo fundraising for this or how? So yes, the zoo is partially funded by public money, but also through private donations. Uh, okay. You're actually able to donate. You could put your name on an exhibit or on the wall if you would like. Really? There's different levels of donations that they will accept. Very nice. When is the opening for this? So we are slated to have a grand opening Labor Day of next year. Excellent. We're excited. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We'll have uh, anything from small invertebrates to the biggest players are the sharks. We'll have some nine foot sharks in here. Uh, eight or nine different species of sharks. We'll have eels. We'll have sea otters, we'll have sea turtles. So we pretty much uh, run the gamut of species that live in and around the ocean. We're just finishing up, getting closer to the end of fundraising, but uh, still looking for funders. If you're out there and you're thinking, I'd love to have my name up in the aquarium, please let us know. Oh, you can actually have your name displayed? Absolutely. We have uh, several different levels that people can donate to, and we'd love to have your name up here. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah. This is going to be an awesome exhibit. I know we're going to make the grand opening and hope to see you guys there too. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us on this segment of American Dream TV. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Well, that's our episode of American Dreams Selling Kansas City. My name is Adriana Bates, and I've enjoyed hosting you as we've toured around this amazing city with our top real estate professionals. Tune in with us next time, and don't forget to follow us on our socials at The American Dream TV. So that's it, and don't forget, cheers to your American dream.